One Piece is an anime slash manga that even after almost 25 years of releasing manga chapters and anime episodes, has continued to achieve many accolades. One Piece not only won the Guinness World Record for the most copies published by a single author, but it also broke that record in 2022, and even more copies of One Piece have been bought by the public. One of the many reasons One Piece is so popular and loved by many is its characters. And there are two characters I want to talk about that not only a lot of people love and are hyped about, but are also strong and compared to each other a lot. The one-armed swordsman who leads the red-haired pirate Shanks, who has a bounty of 4 billion berries by the way, and the world's strongest swordsman Dracul Mihawk, who has a bounty of 3.5 billion berries. Hello everyone, Captain here. And before the video starts, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below to let me know your thoughts and opinions. And with all that out of the way, let's talk about who would win between Shanks and Mihawk. Now, one of the first things I'd like to talk about when comparing these two is their bounties. Me personally, I don't think bounties in One Piece properly correlate with strength when comparing two people. Individually, if someone has a high bounty, they're pretty strong, but if they have a low bounty, they're also pretty weak. But when you compare two characters, then the scaling can be weird, because sometimes someone with a lower bounty can end up beating the other with a higher and vice versa. A good example of this being Luffy and Kaido. Although Kaido was much stronger than Luffy, and consistently kept knocking Luffy out in many of their fights, eventually Luffy ended up winning and defeating Kaido, even though Kaido should have been stronger. When it comes to Shanks and Mihawk, we know that before Shanks lost his arm, he was Mihawk's rival, and they always used to spar against each other in sword matches. In Shanks' Viva card, it states, and I quote, one of the four emperors who reigns in the New World. Once an apprentice of Roger's pirates, he later went head to head with Hawkeye and eventually became an equal of Whitebeard. He grew up to be an equal to Whitebeard, the red haired has built countless legends in the sea. However, despite his prestige, there is no other pirate who embodies freedom as much as he does. If one defines the Pirate King as the freest man in the sea, then Shanks is the closest to that title. Even in his Viva card, as a kid, it talks about how Shanks was undaunted by combat. Undaunted meaning not intimidated or discouraged by things. It even says how he crossed blades with the likes of Whitebeard and Golden Lion Shiki as a kid. Whitebeard who during the time was stated to be equal to Roger, although during this time Roger was suffering from an illness that was going to kill him within a year. And Shiki who was someone who was around Roger's level as well during this time. And for those that don't know things like Oda's SBS segments and Viva cards, they are indeed canon and can be used for extra canon information stated by Oda himself. There are multiple statements from the data books that say Whitebeard is consistently the world's strongest man or pirate, even in his old age with his illness. And one page also says how Shanks has the ability to stand firm against Whitebeard himself. And for those that don't know, old Whitebeard is equal in strength to his prime self. We know this because he still held the title of world's strongest man or pirate all the way up until he died. So Shanks was stated to be able to stand firm and be equal to Whitebeard in strength, who was equal to his younger prime self, who was Roger's rival. And even though Roger was the pirate king, Whitebeard was still stated to be the strongest pirate. So Shanks already has a lot going for him when you take into account his statements and stuff from the Viva cards, data books, etc. But what has Shanks done in the series? Not a lot, to be honest. Shanks has hyped up a lot throughout the series, and we still have never seen him have a proper canon fight in One Piece. One of the best things he's done is stop the Paramount War, or Marine Fort. His presence alone, along with his crew, made Sengoku, Akainu, and Blackbeard all not want to fight against them, and Sengoku called the war off. And the other thing that Shanks has done is somehow stop Kaido from coming to Marine Fort to kill Whitebeard. We don't know for sure how or what happened. But all we know is that they got into what was described as a scuffle, a scuffle being a short fight or struggle. So based off this, maybe we can say that Shanks and Kaido may have had some sort of clash, probably with Haki, and they were both even or maybe Shanks overpowered Kaido in the clash and then talked them down from going to Marine Ford. We actually don't know, but let's just say if you did want to go with this as evidence, when Kaido was fighting against Luffy, he says how there are only a few people capable of actually fighting him, and it shows Shanks is one of those individuals. In order for Kaido to consider Shanks as one of the very few individuals he could fight against, or that could fight against him, he'd have to have been so strong that he was equal to Kaido in power, or possibly stronger. And he also says how Shaki is really what makes someone strong, and is over Devil Food powers. 
you can say this is the case as many of the strongest people in the series have really strong hockey compared to the ones with devil fruits like shanks mihawk roger Rayleigh, odin rocks garp etc now what i would like to talk about next is one piece film red the movie isn't canon to the actual one piece manga but the characters and the way that they're portrayed and even how some of the fights occur within the movie were all supervised and approved by Oda himself. Oda was the executive producer, character designer, and script reviewer of the film. In the film Red movie, Shanks was able to react and dodge Kizaru's attacks. Kizaru with his double food literally being light and can attack with light itself. He can also travel at these speeds too if he wishes. I'm not here to argue about his abilities and if they th I'm not here to argue about his abilities and if people think they're actually light speed or not. If you don't think so, you can disagree in the comments. Anyways, if you don't want to take what happened in the film as canonical, Shanks should be faster than a lot of characters that we've currently seen within the manga. This should be fine as many people fear Shanks and his crew and normally don't want to fight against him at all. And Shanks does seem to be this high tier person that Luffy is constantly trying to surpass throughout the series, so it would make sense that Shanks is someone who is usually either stronger or faster than some of the people that Luffy does face himself against. Sadly, this is all I can think about with Shanks until we actually see more of him do stuff within the story, or actually get his first canonical fight in the story. But now that I've talked about Shanks the Skeleton, let's talk about the world's strongest swordsman, Mihawk. Now Mihawk is a little bit better in the sense that we've seen him fight a few people in the series, and he also has statements and other things that can help with his strength. Mihawk's Viva card says, and I quote, the world's greatest swordsman looking down on his prey from his position of power. He is a rare great swordsman who has been recognized since before the time of the great pirates and continues to reign as the world's number one in both name and reality. Mihawk who joined the Shichibukai, the seven warlords, is a lone pirate without a group. Cruising the oceans, he spends his days killing time. The hawk Sai, feared by all sword fighters, looks forward to the coming of a wielder who will surpass Shanks who once crossed blades with him, end quote. His Viver card talks about how he's the strongest swordsman and he is waiting for an opponent who can surpass Shanks the challenger. This is Shanks before he became a Yonko, by the way, since in Shanks' Viver card it says how after his duels with Mihawk, he grew to be able to compete with Whitebeard and became an emperor of the sea. So that means that Mihawk was a rival to a Shanks that wasn't a Yonko yet and wasn't able to compete with Whitebeard. We also don't know before the time skip if Mihawk is Yonko level, because during the Paramount War, Mihawk wasn't sure if he could actually battle against Whitebeard, who was old and dying, and he also backed out of the war once Shanks and his crew arrived. Mihawk didn't leave because he was scared of Shanks or anything like that. He won't fight Shanks because he has one arm, and he would have to fight his whole crew as well. I just brought this up for those who would bring this up as an argument to try to say Shanks over Mihawk. In terms of Mihawk's strength, we haven't seen much from him either, sadly. In terms of speed, he should be somewhere higher. in a very small coffin looking boat without any crew members at all so it's not really about him fearing shanks 
But overall, although at face value, it may seem that Shanks is just much stronger than Mihawk, Mihawk literally has a statement that puts him over Shanks. So if you disagree with that statement, I don't know what to say, but it's your opinion, to be honest. If you want to take into account Film Red as a canon source to Shanks, by all means, go for it. If you want to take into account Film Red as a canon source to Shanks, by all means, go for it. If not, it really is at the moment just left up to interpretation. It is tough talking about this fight since both of them really don't have a lot of scaling to work off of, but I do hope that I was able to at least provide some sort of insight as to who would win and why. Don't forget to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and comment, and let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. And I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.